Hello, my name is The Jordan, and I'm back analyzing the new Scarlet and Violet Pokemon and their potential in Gen 9 VGC Draft Leagues. This generation is throwing a lot of extreme, powerful, and interesting new tools our way, but don't fret. I am here to help you sharpen your analytical skill set, assess mons you've never seen before, think about what's going to be strong in this upcoming format, and beat back some of the craziest new mons that might be coming your way. Uh, my friends and I in the VBL League have had a rich tiering discussion. We've talked about basically every new Pokemon and come up with a ranking from 1 to 9 how good we think they're going to be. But we held off on the Paradox Mons. We didn't know whether this class of 14 really strong new Pokemon were going to be available right away. Well, turns out they're available, and they're going to make a big impact at the start of this generation. So the scale now goes up to 11. Some of these Mons are really, really powerful. You're going to want one of them on your team, and you're going to want to have a good understanding as to how to beat them. Um, you're probably aware of some of the Paradox Mons from the ranked ladder, but... Uh, in Draft League, it's about assessing all the options. Your best four moves that you use on the ladder is not the same thing as your Draft League viability. Some of these mons, these Paradox mons, I think are going to be a lot better in Draft League, and some I think are going to be much worse in Draft League. So we're going to analyze these new Paradox mons through a Draft League lens. Are you ready? Let's do it. The first Paradox Mon for which I'm really excited about its potential in Draft League is going to be Slitherwing. You probably haven't seen a lot of Slitherwing so far, but I think it's going to be a lot stronger in Draft Leagues because of the high variety of ways in which you can use it and use it well. Um, I suspect it'll be underrated at the start of the generation because the only other fighting bug we've seen before was Buzzwool, and Buzzwool was really exploitable, it had that low special defense, so you just knock it out with a flamethrower. It's going to be a lot harder to knock out Slitherwing because it has good mixed bulk. Like It's got, uh, it's bulkier than 80 87% of fully evolved mons in the new regional decks, which means it's going to be able to survive the Psychics, the Moon Blast, the Fire Blast, and it's going to be able to dish out really strong, super effective coverage or just really strong stab. 135 is one of the highest attack stats in the whole format, so like, despite it being a little critter here, nearly everything is going to fear this stab close combat. It's also got a stab healing move, a stab a priority move, a stab positioning move, and a lot of good coverage. Now you might ask yourself, why is acrobatics at the top of this coverage list? Well, we might as well get into the unique abilities of the Paradox Mons. They all have one of two abilities where you meet a condition and then their highest attack stat is boosted 30%, and that condition is either Sun for Slitherwing and others, or for the other seven Mons it's electric terrain. You set up that condition and then you can add 30% on top of its already really high attack stat. Or you can set up 30% on top of its really high special defense stat. The really nice thing about having all high stats is that depending on how you build this guy out each week, it's going to either be really strong or really bulky or a little bit of both. Uh, and that's going to be really nice. And so normally you need either sun or electric terrain to set up that protosynthesis boosting ability. But there also is a new item, the booster energy, which means you don't need sun or electric terrain you just immediately get that boost. And so you consume your item, and that's where acrobatics comes in. You have a really good item that consumes itself, for Slitherwing in particular, which means it's got a very strong acrobatics. When you don't have an item, acrobatics becomes double power, and so it becomes very strong. So the combination of fighting and bug, fighting bug is actually not a very bad type. Like, this is one of the only types that exists that resists both rock and ground. A lot of mons just can't hit this guy very hard. Um, so the combination of bug fighting and our new honorary third stab, acrobatics, means that over half of mons are getting hit super effectively by one of these three. Uh, and very, very few mons are going to be resisting all three. It's basically like Zapdos and Tapu Koko. It's like very few mons. So this is a mon with a very wide threat bubble, a very wide uh, potential, a uh, range of potential options on it. For each of the five mons I'm analyzing today, I'm going to showcase a few sample sets, how it all comes together. Draft League is all about planning for specific scenarios, but not every mon's completely unique. There are certain archetypes and roles and ways you can group these mons, eight mons that are all beaten the same way. So one archetype that you're going to be able to handle really well as Slitherwing is the bulky fighting type. There are lots of these guys, and they resi uh, Slitherwing resists fighting. Normally it seems like fighting v fighting is an even matchup, but Bug makes it resist fighting. We've also got that boosted acrobatics that we just talk about, which means we are a terror to all these fighting mons. Um, we Oko, the, the new fighting type starter, Quackable. We Oko most Passimian. We do 80 or 90% to one of the bulkiest fighting types, uh, Hariyama. So 
we win those matchups, but also we've got really strong stab moves to beat most other things. So boost our energy, 30% boost, really, really strong set. This is, I think, like the bread and butter set that's going to be able to handle a lot of different threats. This is a more interesting set, which is you want to be able to use Protosynthesis, not just use the booster energy to get a boost, but when sun is up, you get the boost. The problem with setting sun is that you are weak to fire. You don't want to be setting up your own weakness. So uh, this is a kind of slither wing that can handle the fire types that you might be facing, right? Uh, you have a fire resist berry, so you can handle the Arcanine or the Entei or the Incineroar. Arcanine is, is, is in the format, but the other two I mentioned aren't even in the format yet. Uh, but you've got a ground move. You can ter terrestrialize ground and become really, really strong. You can put a speed controller next to this guy so that you outspeed the Arcanine. Um, or you can just bulk up in front of it because you've got the fire resist berry and you can survive. So you can use sun, but then they bring in their fire type. It's really not so bad. Um, a stomping tantrum is a good way for deleting them. And then uh, in sun, morning sun is healing 75%. This is a bulky bug that's going to be able to handle some end games once you've dealt with the fire type or be a surprise winner again into those fire types. Lastly, this is the terrestrialization generation. Anything can beat anything. This is a Tornadus, right? Four times effective against Slitherwing, but if you run Assault Fest, and we've got lots of attacks, so we don't mind running an Assault Fest, um, then we can even live stab four times super effective air slashes, right? Um, Tornadus all of a sudden has a choice, right? It can run Tailwind, um, thinking that it doesn't fear the Slitherwing, but Slitherwing's got Wild Charge, so it, it should be able to one hit KO the Tornadus, depending on, on bulk, of course. Um, but you can uh, click Flame Charge, not even fearing, because you can live this Air Slash. After a Flame Charge, you become faster than Tornadus. So it can still click Tailwind, but the point is, this is a head-to-head -head matchup that's actually going to pressure some of the Mons that seem like they have the best matchup into, into Slitherwing. You can get faster, you can get stronger, <laughs> and you can uh, delete flying types. A, a bug that can beat flying types, unbelievable. And even before we fast, we have a priority move here. So we can beat some of the mods that seem like they're so much faster than Slitherwing, but not today. So, I think this bug's had a lot of potential, particularly when you're abusing terrestrialization, right? If you become an electric type, you are just hardcore beating all the flying types. So, this is a mod that's gonna be able to use terrestrialization really well, and even without, it's just gonna be a really strong attacker that with a pretty decent typing and pretty good stats. So, if this guy is too far away from the top tier when you see it in your draft league board, you should be drafting this guy. I really do believe in it. Next is a mon that I think will significantly underperform expectations and probably end up being the worst of the Paradox mons in Draft League. I think it's just as useful to analyze a mon like this that has on its surface really, really great things going for it, but when you dig one level deeper, realize it's frequently going to fall short of the thing that it's supposed to do in a Draft League match. Uh, so you shouldn't have to draft this guy and lose to put on your thinking cap, do some theory crafting, and go, oh, this guy's probably a trap and I shouldn't draft it unless it's cheap. So. Why am I so down on the futuristic Tyranitar, known as Iron Thorns, when I'm so up on Slitherwing? Both of those mons have very high attack stats, they both have middling speed stats, and they both have pretty good defensive numbers. Well, the difference is your moves. Um, it looks like they both have different type, uh, coverage options and different stab options, but nothing really compares to Slitherwing's close combat, 120 base power. Nothing compares on, on Iron Thorn's move pool to a 90 base power priority move. Nothing compares to 120 base power Flare Blitz or 110 base power Acrobatics. Um, all of Iron Thorn's coverage moves are 80 base power or 75 base power. None of them are particularly strong. Your main stab option is a move that hurts yourself, Wild Charge, and a move that's not quite strong enough, Thunder Punch. Um, on the rock side, you have Stone Edge, definitely your strongest move, but it does miss 20% of the time, so there's that. So you're lacking great stab options and you're lacking particularly strong coverage moves that you really want to click. So. You're going to need to use boosts really effectively because in practice, Slitherwing can get a lot of one-hit KOs that Iron Thorns is frequently going to fall short on. So next, we're going to talk about typing um, because a double weakness to flying is bad, but it's not so bad. There's not a lot of random coverage flying moves out there. In fact, a lot of Mons lost access to dual wing beat heading into this generation. 
but a double weakness to ground is crippling. Like, it's so bad. Um, particularly when you think about the two boosts of Paradox Bond, some encourage you to use fire types, the others encourage you to use electric types. Both are weak to ground. This is the generation of having strong ground coverage. And I looked at the format, and these are 15 random coverage earth powers that can all one-shot Iron Thorns. In fact, Torkoal doesn't even make this list. I sorted it on power. It's down here. But Torkoal earth power one-shots Tyranitar. So some of the mons that uh, Iron Thorns is meant to beat, it's going to really struggle against. Like, Mudsdale is going to stop being Tantrum, and Iron Thorns is so dead. So... That's a problem. The second thing is, um, if you're not going to be able to live, then you need to at least go first. And this is like such a bad speed stat. Uh, it, there are the things that that Slitherwing can live that this guy certainly cannot. Things of equivalent power. Um, and if you're just falling short of the Oko, you need to be able to take that hit. And if you're not going first, you need to be able to take two hits. This guy's frequently going to deal 80%, get Oko'd, or do six um, takes take 80, deal 80, but then they're going first uh, turn two. So. Um, we, we need that setup opportunity. Dragon Dance is the best setup move. That's really, really good to have access to Dragon Dance, but this Dragon Dance range is just short of where it needs to be. Here we go. So looking at this, the, the format based on speed, these top six are all going to give Iron Thorns trouble, and that could be six teams that are now able to outspeed you after a Dragon Dance. And when you want to squeeze out maximum power, considering this guy has low base power moves and it really wants to get that one hit KO, you need to run that attack boosting nature, which means the fastest you can get after a Dragon Dance is this far, and so that's 15 mods that are going to give this guy problems as it tries to set up. Some of these guys have Tailwind, uh, some of these guys can just destroy it as it tries to set up, so pretty concerning Dragon Dance range and it's certainly usable right like with the original Tyr Tyranitar is not as fast as this one um, it could use Dragon Dance sometimes against some teams but um, you know when you have to support your your Mon it shouldn't be top tier when you have to support your Mon for it to really do things uh, this guy's gonna need a fast tailwind by its side I think a lot of the time so lastly, the difference. If this is not a bad mon, let's be clear, but when you're comparing it to the Paradox mons, uh, they can support the team. When you compare it to original Tyranitar, Tyranitar supports the team. It sets sand and then other sand abilities activate. It also supports itself. The sand boosts its special defense so that it in practice has 160 base special defense. A lot of things that are good against Titar still don't one hit KO, but a lot of things, that's a big difference in special defense stats. A lot of hydro pumps oko this guy and so when you think about an archetype that it is is common the bulky water type if we can't get that one shot and we get one shot in return as is the case with Slowbro, i mean there are certain circumstances right we can boost up we can put on a life orb um, but they have access to items too and we want to natively have that advantage on the mons that we're supposed to beat that's my concern here i still have a couple of sample sets so i will show you how to get the most out of this guy um, it's got a lot of attack power so if you can get those one shots and you can support it enough then i believe in it Boost your energy. Good 30% boost. Why not? Um, wild Charge, Rock Slide, and because both of its stab attacking types uh, are not good against ground, you're frequently going to need Ice Punch as its most important coverage move. Will it one shot? Probably not. Probably going to fall short, but maybe with the boost of energy, it's good enough. Here's another way. Uh, you drag. You don't try to live uh, some of the attacks that you're not able to live, but you Dragon Dance up against slower teams. You should be going first after Dragon Dance, and then you can Rock Slide, get those flinches, or Iron Head, get more flinches. Um, you can definitely play the odds when you're boosted and you're strong. Right? And you're dealing good damage and getting the flinch chance is not bad, especially if you Terra type. Um, Terra, I think, is going to bring this guy over the edge to getting one to KOs. But the question is, are you investing your Terrestrialization into a Mon that won't survive very long? Now, Terrestrialization will improve its type, right? All, it will only have a 2x weak to ground, definitely a lot better than a 4x weak. Um, but here's a way you could run this guy in Trick Room. It's not good enough to be a Trick Room sweeper, but against fast, fast teams, it will have the speed advantage in Trick Room. Against really fast mons that invest into speed, so you should be able to Eerie Impulse the special attackers, Stone Edge when you need maximum damage, and then Ice Punch gonna frequently be important for beating ground types. 
So this is how I think you 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 use it. You squeeze out the maximum power and you run dedicated support um, screens to keep it alive, tailwind to make it go first, that kind of thing. Um, it's just why am I investing top dollar into a mon that I frequently need to support? So if you see this guy near the top, just don't draft it. Only when we're getting into like the middle tiers do I think this guy is a reasonable deal to draft. That's my opinion anyway. Segway. Since these Paradox Mons get big bonuses off of Electric Terrain and Sun, it's going to be nice to have a Mon that can set those conditions quickly. There are Prankster priority users of Sunny Day and very fast Sunny Day, but Electric Terrain there's, is a little bit more limited. Um, and so you might actually just want to look at the fastest users of, of Electric Terrain. Electrode, I think, is kind of a deal here. I had to fight with my tiering partners in order to get this guy even three points, um, but I think it might even be better than that. Um, being the fastest in the format, having T-Wave as speed control and a fast electric terrain, that's frequently what mons like uh, Iron Thorns are going to need to put them over the edge into one hit KO territory. Um, looking at this, the fastest, some of the fastest electric terrain setters are actually these new Paradox mons, like... Iron Valiant. This is a hybrid new form of Gallade and Gardevoir. Fairy Fighting might be a completely unique typing. Maybe there's a Mega that has him. But to me, it's a unique typing. And this move pool is unbelievable. Um, <laughs> this is the first time in analyzing Mons and uh, visually like this that I've ever not been able to fit a. a its list of relevant moves on one page. So first we're just gonna look at attacks. First we have close combat. You already know I love close combat for the high base power. We have Moonblast is the gold standard fairy move. Um, this is a mon that is strong on both attacking types, physical and special. So being able to do close combat and spirit break. Spirit break used to be only Grimmsnarl. Now it's a it's a stab physical fairy move that also low, lowers their special attack every time. Very nice to have. Close combat plus Spirit Break on the physical side, or Moonblast plus Aura Sphere. These are some rare moves to get, and gold standard moves. Strong stab on both sides makes this guy both strong and unpredictable. This coverage is insane. You might not actually use some of these coverage moves that often, um, but when something's 4x weak to Ice Punch, you should probably put the Ice Punch there. When something's 4x weak to Leaf Blade or Thunder Punch, then it's a very, very good option. And so this guy has 14 times worth of coverage. And it's got not as much coverage on the special side, but enough to fill out the move pool that you should be able to get perfect coverage against any Draft League roster. Particularly when you add Terra Blast, you shouldn't need Terra Blast. This mon shouldn't need terrestrialization to fill out its typing. But this is more of a glass cannon. This is a very, very good speed tier, but um, for for a legendary level Pokemon, a paradox mon, this is not this is its weakness, is getting one shot. And so you have to make the most of that early tempo you have. You can do that by getting those one hikayos and that's all it's all about putting the booster energy on um, helping hand uh, leer you know other ways to boost your attack uh, stat further but knowing that this this guy cannot target the one hikayos but it can team up with its partner icy wind is very useful on a fast pokemon um, swords dance as you fake out or redirect then you're always taking those one hit KOs and knowing that you only need to boost one of your stats here. Uh, if you you don't need Dragon Dance, right, to boost both your attack and speed. Sword Dance should be plenty because you're already going first against most Pokemon. Trick Room is always an impactful move. Um, is it a good Trick Room setter? No, but will it set people? Uh, will it set Trick Room by surprise a couple of times a season? Yeah, because people are going to protect in front of this guy. They're going to fear the close combats and the moon blasts, so you're going to be able to get those Trick Rooms. Um, Wide Guard, that's a good trump card move. I think the best way to use this guy is as, as an attacker, where the fourth slot is a random move. One of these 20 moves, they're not going to be able to account for it all. Um, if you protect in front of... Uh, Iron Valiant, then it can Encore you into Protect. That's so bad on a fast Mon to not be able to Protect in front of it. Um, you could Trick. You could Scarf this guy so that it's outspeeding everything, but then uh, trick a, a, a Trick Room Setter, um, Trick the Scarf onto them, or Trick a Scarf onto a Setup Mon, um, really cripple a Mon. 
you can even run this guy with screens or with quick guard and other just generally supportive moves. The main thing you should be doing looking at this, this attack stat is squeezing out maximum power. But, a, but using that power on some utility attacks can be worth it, especially when you're short of the Oko and you want Icy Wind into Moonblast next turn. That can certainly work. The mark of a top tier is winning the matchups you're supposed to win, according to the type chart, and also winning a lot of the matchups you're supposed to lose, according to the type chart, depending on how you build out your set. So psychic types are supposed to be fairy types. Steel types are supposed to be fairy types. However, if you're powerful enough, then you can nuke them out of nowhere, right? This knockoff, um, fighting plus dark is a very good stab combination exactly for situations like this, the things that are good against fighting types. Um, a booster energy boosted knockoff one shots in DD. That's really, really good to be able to one shot one of the best Pokemon in the format. Um, Goldango, if you don't know about Goldango, you probably will. It's the best steel type in the whole format now. Um, it's a ghost steel, so um, without Terra, it's knockoff. Is You're doing like 90%. If it's not bulky, then you actually have a shot at Okoing it. Um, that's very, very good. But if you want to destroy this amazing Pokemon, then you Terra Dark, Terra Dark boosted, booster energy boosted, knockoff. In fact, you only need one of these, right? Terra Dark should be sufficient. Knockoff can destroy even a bulky Goldango. So you have the huge flexibility, right? When you're either really physically strong or really specially strong, and you have amazing coverage and you have the option to do offensive terrestrialization, it becomes basically impossible to predict and beat Iron Valiant on game one. Once you know it's set, you have potential counterplay, but this is how you abuse the new mechanics to their absolute fullest. Booster energy, terra offensive terrestrialization, and then at that point, your two moves are covering basically everything. Close combat's always good. So then you can protect yourself um, when you're about to get shadow sneaked or something. You can trick room because uh, they set, they're they trying to set Tailwind so that they can actually overcome this Iron Valiant. Um, so just having that one wild card fourth move, very, very good. I have a couple other sets here. Uh, this is the Electric Valiant. Um, you want to set up Electric Terrain for this guy, right? Because it becomes 30% stronger. Um, Boom, uh, that would be a 30% boost to special attacking. Um, Moonblast plus Thunderbolt is very, very good. If you're boosting your power with electric terrain and your electric boosts are mo boosted further in electric terrain, it becomes your honorary third stab move. All the water types are not safe anymore. Um, what if, this is a very good combo also, in only two shot, two attacks, because what if their only fairy resist is a Charizard? What if their only fairy resist is a Tentacruel? Zap, zap, zap. So, um, Electric Seed can make you bulkier on the physical side, Calm Mind can make you bulkier on the special side, and then just one turn of setup can turn two shots into one shots. This is not a mon you want to set up with indefinitely, um, but just one boost can really make the difference. It can make this guy go, go from a pretty big threat to an unstoppable threat. Sometimes, though, you just want to go for the one shot. Um, when you know there's a certain attack out there, a really strong steel move that you can't live, then you go for um, the Swords Dance, live with one health, and then boom, Shadow Sneak. Um, with that attack stat, and 2x with Swords Dance, and the option to go Terra Ghost, you actually might be getting some Okos with Shadow Sneak, which is pretty nice. And um, a nice thing about this speed tier here is a hun base 100 is the most common speed stat. Uh, and like, like there's Charizard and Entei and Volcarona, those they max out at 167. You can reach 168 without investing in speed boosting nature. So you can go max power and beat that Charizard with Thunder Punch, beat half the Pokedex with a strong close combat. So you really, really have a lot of, of abilities to take good damage with just one turn of setup and even sometimes with zero turns of setup. This is finally the uh, the very versatile uh, Valiant here. We're using booster energy to get 50% more speed if we max out our speed here. So now we're faster than all the Pokemon in the format. We're also faster than most of the Pokemon in the format after the Choice Scarf, and we're not even Choice Locked ourselves, right? The benefits of the Choice Scarf without the restrictions of the Choice Scarf is one of the things that make the Paradox Mon so good um, and what makes Iron Valiant so good, right? Because it's it's providing that speed control role against basically anyone. You can Icy Wind into two, into double up KO. 
but then you're not locked into it. You can moonblast and, and follow up for yourself. You can knock off some items. You can have that surprise trump card in wide guard. So that's the key here, is you keep the people guessing. If you just want a, a, a big hitter, right? If you just want to click buttons, then you're not going to get quite top tier value out of Iron Valiant. I mean, it's still going to be very good, but I recommend putting this guy at basically the top tier. There's only a couple of Pokemon in the, in the whole format that I think might be in a tier above Iron Valiant. So I think it's at a 10, but if you really devote yourself to using all of these moves, keeping the opponent guessing, physical, special, fast, uh, bulky, powerful, different things, at different circumstances. This is a first round pick. This is a team leader type Pokemon. I really recommend Iron Valiant. Okay, so I'm at 25 minutes recording and the algorithm punishes me if I go over 30 minutes. So I, I did three Paradox Mons. I'm gonna add one and do three in another video. Uh, some of the format defining Mons are still to come, uh, but I noticed I asked for people to subscribe in the last episode and four new people did. So turns out asking helps. So I'm gonna ask again, uh, hope you don't mind please subscribe. If I can finally reach that 100 subscriber mark I've been trying to reach, uh, then I will do something. I will make the the analysis materials, the stuff I used, in, I'll make the whole tier list <laughs> available. Um, all the stuff I use to tier these mods, um, I'll make that available as learning resources. Even if it comes in the next video, I'll put it in the description. Um, so I ask you to like, share, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube things. Let's make this a hub for learning. Um, I think they did a really good job with some of these Paradox Mons. You know, they shouldn't just make some of the Mons bad and some of the Mons good. Like a real fighting game, they should make all the Mons pretty good and different, you know? Extremes are good for design, and some of these Mons are a little crazy, you know? <laughs> Iron Valiant thinks amazing, um, but we can, we can adjust for that. In Draft League pricing, we can ban some stuff if we absolutely have to, um, but this is really, really good for the format, right? Extremes are good for design, and new options are good for the game. And so Gen 9 is going to be the best format, or the best generation yet for Draft League. Maybe Nintendo will acknowledge us. Or maybe not. Who cares? I'm having fun with the game. Uh, let me know how you feel about the Paradox Mons entering Draft League. Uh, I will see you soon.